Hello on YouTube, it's Jake Reed coming at you today with episode 3 of the Miami Dolphins full simulation rebuild here on Madden 19. We're going to continue to give you guys some tips and tricks on how to build a long-term dynasty in franchise mode on all Madden against the AI, against your teams, however you're trying to be competitive. I'm going to give you the secrets on how to build a long-term dynasty and how to build a great team that you're going to want to play with for season after season, and you're not going to want to just give up and restart the franchise year after year. I went ahead already, and this is week one. I went ahead, I did our training real quick. I wanted to go through and scroll through our team real quick before we begin the season and show you guys that because we started out with a young team, like I said, we went ahead and we traded for a bunch of players. You know, we traded for uh, Malik Hooker. We traded away a lot of our older players. We traded for Kendall Beckwith. We traded for Tyus Bowser. We, we went ahead, we picked up Charles Harris. Or no, he was on the team already, actually, and we just decided to start him. We picked up Vanderdose, is the one that I was thinking of. We kept Wake because he doesn't have a whole lot of trade value. We went ahead and we got went out and we got Akello Witherspoon. Uh, and then on offense, we went ahead, we got uh, Dorian Johnson. We went and got Siragusa off of the Ravens. We're starting Gesicki because he's young. Our wide receiving squad is staying young, and we got Godwin as well. And then at running back, we went out and we picked up Jeremy Hill. Uh, and so what I want to show you is that we're only through the preseason already. And as you can see, we have a bunch of upgrades already. Uh, and we're already going to be working our way back up to building a solid contender uh, for the long term here in this franchise. Uh, the Dolphins started out at a 75 in my personal realistic ratings roster that I developed. And we're only at a 73 after trading away uh, a big chunk of our team. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to upgrade some of these players and see what we can do from there. We're going to go ahead and for the majority of these players, we're going to try and get them the zone. Because we're simulating, we're not using these players. Uh, I don't mean zone, I mean we're going to go ahead and get them the scheme fit. We're going to try and get them all to be developed into our scheme. And that's another plus of having young players in Mad by Team. Um, this wasn't quite the same way in the previous Maddens because there wasn't these scheme fits uh, and it didn't matter too much in terms of, you know, if you had young players, it was great because you could mold them the way that you wanted. But if you have young players, you can mold them the way you want in this game, but you get bonus XP if they are in your scheme. Whenever you do your weekly training, they get bonus XP for being in your scheme. So you can basically double level up your players if you do this the right way and develop them to be in your scheme. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. Uh, easy way to do this, you just go to this screen and I just scroll through every position and check for that little blue dot up in the top right. Uh, and then I click on anybody that is and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring them all into the scheme that we want to be in. Taking a little while to load here today. Now we're gonna go through the D line. Lake McDowell ends up with some points. And I think that we also are going to have to go ahead and fix up the depth chart before we go ahead and start the season. Uh, because I don't believe we did that when we left off the last time. We'll go ahead and do that real quick after I spend all these XP points. And then we'll be good to go to start simming forward some games and seeing if this team can actually do anything this year. Uh, I'm not betting on them to win any games, really, but if they do happen to surprise us, I'm not going to be upset. We'll get more XP by winning, uh, and this is why this, this strategy is actually even more effective if you're playing all of your games, because you'll be able to play with these players, you'll be able to get them yards, you'll be able to win games, and you get more XP by winning games. So uh, that's really the way to go. But if you're doing something like this where you're simulating, you still want to start off young, you want to start off with a totally young roster, uh, you want to go ahead and you want to make sure that you get as much XP for these players as possible. So we're just going to keep leveling everybody up, it's just going to take a couple minutes here. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and we'll set the depth chart like I said and we'll start moving forward. 
If you guys haven't, go check out my other series on my channel. I have a couple series going right now. Uh, I just have some miscellaneous uh, Rainbow Six Siege gameplay that I've been playing with my friends lately. I put that up. Uh, I would consider myself a decently skilled player at that game. So if you want to see, you know, how to get a little bit better at the game, go watch me and take some notes. Uh, I play with one other guy that's pretty good at the game. Uh, his name's Jake as well. Uh, and he's pretty good. You'll see me and him at the top of the leaderboard most of the time. So you'll be able to, you know, see some pretty good players in action. We play with some lower skill players and we do our best to try and help them out uh, and try and bring them up to our skill level as well. But uh, yeah, if you want to check that out, go check it out. Uh, see what we're all about. And then we also have a couple other series on the channel. I've only uploaded one episode of it so far. It's the Let's Talk series. I'm going to be uploading another episode of that soon. And that is essentially just uh, a series where we, you know, I talk about, you know, mainstream issues and things that are going on. Uh, we talk about the Logan Paul versus KSI fight, a bunch of different things like that, the Urban Meyer situation and whatnot. So if you're interested in anything like that, go check that out. And then last but not least, right now we actually have the, um, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers franchise going on. Uh, so if you guys want to see a Pittsburgh Steelers franchise, I play all the games there. Um, go pick that up. We have three episodes of that out right now, so go take a look at that. Uh, right now I'm just going through the depth chart, making sure that we're starting all our young players. Uh, we want to make sure that we get everybody XP here. Because um, like I said, the, the, the most important thing when you're doing one of these franchises, there's two huge, huge tips to rebuilding and building a dynasty long term in this game and it's one it's getting your players xp make sure you get those gold medals in the training camp uh at the beginning of the season and then sim it out the rest of the way on those gold medals you get a ton of xp and then number two you want to start young you want to sell off all your older players all your higher overall players uh and you want to you want to bring in young guys we're gonna go ahead we picked up bucky hodges we're gonna bring him in and we're gonna start him at the second tight end spot because he had a little bit better speed in terms of offensive line, we have a lot of young guys. I don't remember exactly what we picked up, so usually want um, this is how I set my depth charts. I put two at each position, and then I have a swing guy play every other position. So two right guards, two right tackles, two at center, we'll have two at left guard, actually three left guards. So this guy's the swing guy. Connor Hillen will play at every other position. He'll be the, the third guy at every position, and that's that's typical for me, that's how I like to run it. Um, not a lot of people put too much attention into their offensive line, but that is maybe one of the best ways. Uh, even if you're just doing a simulation rebuild like this, that's one of the best ways to get production out of your players because you'll be protecting your quarterback and you'll be blocking for your uh, running back. So you'll be able to get a lot of production even if you're starting off with a low overall team like this. In terms of defensive end, who do we want to start? Uh, we'll want Arden Key to back up because he's a rookie, so we'll try and rotate him in. Over here, Arden Key, okay, same, same rotation, we'll make sure there's not another defensive end here. And we're good to go there. In terms of D-tackle, we want, yeah, Godshow and Vanderdose, and then Malik McDowell. All three of these guys are pretty good, and I'm okay with them rotating in. We'll bring up Vincent Taylor, and then one of these defensive ends that can potentially play down here put in Arden Key just because he's young and I don't have a problem with him progressing. A left outside linebacker, like I said, we brought in Beckwith, so we'll be starting him. What else do we got at outside linebacker? So we brought in Bowser. Bowser will be starting out there, so Alonzo will be the backup at each position, the third backup. Jerome Baker is going to be a backup to rotate in, and Beckwith will start out here. And then Tyus Bowser will start out here with Jerome Baker backing him up and Alonzo. And then middle linebacker Raekwon McMillan. And then we actually we want our backups at lineback and outside linebacker to come in here. This is a good way to get away with having less people in your linebacking core. Um, go ahead and put your backup outside linebackers at middle linebacker. I like it better this way because if you fill out all of these roster spots, you'll never get XP with all these players. They'll never all play. And so if you have these two and three spots for, you know, left outside and right outside and middle linebacker, if you have them all be the same people, they're going to go ahead and get XP a lot quicker because they'll rotate in at multiple positions. 
And then as we said on defense, uh, we wanted to go ahead and we wanted to start Witherspoon, we wanted to start Tank Kersley, and we wanted to start Rashad Robinson. We wanted to have Howard be our rotational corner. And actually, I think that's incorrect. I think we wanted to do it this way. I think we wanted it to be Everett because we went ahead and picked him up. So it'll be Witherspoon, Tank Kersley, and Everett. And I want to do it this way, actually, because uh, Everett has the speed. He'll be better to match up on the outside. Uh, Weatherspoon's just the better overall corner, and then Tank Kersley will be our slot corner. Free safety. I believe we already have this sorted. Actually, I don't mind that right there. I don't mind Xavier Howard coming in and playing in at safety as a backup safety. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're actually going to gonna do it this way. We'll have Duke Johnson come in like that. In terms of kickoff return, let's see what we want here. We definitely don't want Kenyon Drake back, and we don't have anybody super good at kick returning. So I'm actually just kind of going to leave it the way it is. I'm okay with Jakeem Grant back there and Isaiah Ford. And then we'll see Duke Johnson maybe would be a guy that we could switch in there and not have a whole lot of problem. We'll move him up to third because I'd rather him come in before one of these starters. We'll do the same thing at punt return. That works for me, just like that. Um, and then these they added in these new positions this year. So if you haven't guys, if you guys haven't seen, so third down running backs the same. We're taking Frank Gore out of there for sure. We're gonna leave it like this. Uh, they added in power halfback this year, so you guys can go ahead and bring in a power halfback for certain situations. Uh, what I want to do here is I want Jeremy Hill to come in in those situations. Okay. Ballage and then Drake will be in uh, out of those situations. The slot wide receiver, our wide receiving core was what? Stills and Parker. So yeah, our well, slot's definitely going to be Godwin with Jakeem Grant and Carew coming in. I don't have any problems with that. I might switch out Carew actually for Ford because he's younger. Our rushing defensive ends, that's a rushing left end, so I'm okay with that being as it is. We're just going to put them in the standard format. I don't do too much in terms of changing this up. We're going to put them in exactly as our other defensive ends are. If you guys want, you can change this up however you want. I prefer to just have my defensive ends be lined up exactly the way that they normally are here. Um, and then it doesn't create too many problems for me. Uh, in terms of rushing defensive tackle, Malik McDowell is probably the better one to have in here. And then I also want to have Vanderdose in here rotating and trying to get XP. Your sub package linebacker, I often think that this is better off to be a safety. Um, so this is where I would look to bring in potentially Shamarco Thomas or something, but he really doesn't seem to fit in there. So you would want next, next would be a guy with good speed. And I'm okay with that being like Steven Anthony or Raekwon McMillan. Uh, we'll put it in as McMillan and then Anthony second. And then Beckwith maybe. That's fine with me. We'll just leave it as those three guys. It shouldn't matter too much because we're simming. And then slot cornerback. Let me go back to cornerback and see what we had the lineup as. The slot cornerback, we want to be Tank Kersley, then Robinson, then Howard. And I just do this to match up with the, uh, the order that we have them on on the depth chart. Anything below the starting two will come in at these positions. All right, and then I think we're good to go. We're just going to roll with it like that. We'll go ahead and get simulating on some of these games and see if this team can actually do anything here. Um, we're 53-53 players. Let's go ahead and advance. Apologize for the long waiting screens. It looks like we got a loss week one. Uh, to the Titans, 31 to 14. Not too big of a surprise. Like I said, I'm not going to be too surprised if this team isn't too great to start. You know, we're trying to start a young and belt them. That's unfortunate. We got Michael Kaiser signed away off of our practice squad. He's a decent middle linebacker. So I'm going to go ahead real quick and pick up another middle linebacker that'll hopefully develop on our depth chart. Good practice squad eligible. And Dorian and Daniel seems just as good, so we'll sign him to practice squad. Let's 
start our weekly training, get that underway, and then we'll sim forward again. We had no injuries, no big news to, to speak of here. Uh, we'll go maybe a quarter of the way, four games, we'll check on some stats, and then we'll go from there. I do want to see if we get a bunch more XP from ha you know developing these guys into the scheme. Yep, as you can see on that defensive one, since we now have a lot of players into the right scheme, they're getting a lot of bonus XP from that. So that's what we're going to want to continue to do. We're going to want to continue to um, move forward like that. And I was actually thinking it might be a good idea to go and look uh, just to see who's on the trade block in terms of quarterbacks. I'm not sure if they're going to have anybody that we particularly want, anybody young that we would want to start. I was thinking drafting one might be the way to go. I'm not too interested in any of these guys. The one that I am interested in, we'll look to see what's going on with Teddy Bridgewater for the Jets. I would be interested in bringing in Bridgewater. Um, they have Darnold. And it's likely that Bridgewater does get dealt. The only problem with that is this is a, a division rival, so I think I'm going to go ahead and skip on that, and we'll wait until next season to to bring in a quarterback. Unless we have a major injury, then it might it might force us to pull the trigger. So we'll go ahead and advance again. And like I said, don't expect this this season one record to be phenomenal. Uh, it's in the off season, the draft, all of that, where we do most of our damage. All right, so we'll sim our weekly training again, and you want to do this week by week if you're simulating. You don't want to just come into a franchise, like I said, you want to get your players used to this XP. So you don't want to come in and just hit, you know, hit the button that says sim till the end of the season. If you do that, you're just handicapping yourself. You're throwing away the season, you're throwing away your entire roster, uh, and you're gonna hate yourself for it. So don't do that. Don't come in and hit sim till the off season or sim to the post season or whatever. It's not gonna benefit you in any way. It'll save you a little bit of time, but in the long run, it's actually gonna it's gonna cost you more time because you're gonna go and you're gonna have to go and find replacements at every position as opposed to where you can do something like this and progress your players the way that you want to, you know, and make yourself better off in the long run. I'm going to go to defense real quick and see if anybody's picked up any points. And we have. We're already generating a lot of points here in terms of defense. Minka Fitzpatrick's growing tremendously. We're pumping XP into him. He's getting bonuses for uh, being in the scheme, which is phenomenal. We want to keep doing that with everybody. We want to get Malik Hooker in here because we want to get him XP early. And I just clicked on the wrong one. I hate when I do that. Um, but that's okay. We'll get him some XP here soon. Alright, those are all our XP points spent, at least for the primary players. We want to scout. We're going to bring in a local file. Uh, you want to bring in this draft class, it's just titled 2019, but it's uh, by OSFX. It's by the people that make the MLB rosters and came over and made the Madden rosters this year um, with realistic ratings, and they made this draft class which has all the realistic players in it. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. You, know, you still save yourself two seconds of time, but uh, really what's it going to hurt to bring this in and then you end up with you know, players that you know and players that you're going to like anyway, so I recommend bringing in the draft class. So go ahead and scout all these guys. It looks like there's a ton of quarterbacks that we're going to be able to bring in. Uh, hopefully we can end up with somebody long-term here that will be our franchise quarterback if we don't find one in free agency. I'm thinking what we're going to try and do, we're going to try and go out on a limb and get somebody in free agency, and then we'll also try and pick up one in the draft, because we'll want a little bit of a quarter, quarterback competition. Uh, Tannehill is going to tr probably be our long-term backup, is what I was thinking. Osweiler's going to be on his way out after this season, so that just to let you know on that type of deal. Um, I'm pretty sure that Cameron Wake is going to retire. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to bringing him back for another season. He wants a two-year deal. I think what we'll do, we'll wait till the end of the season to negotiate a contract with him. So for right now, we're just going to hold off and let that sit there. 
And then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna advance again. No injuries yet, which is surprising. And I'm gonna actually go ahead and make sure that they're on, because I, I'm like 99% sure that I had the injuries on to start this franchise. No injuries yet, still. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into settings real quick, because I want injuries to be on, I want this to be as realistic as possible. Yeah, and the injuries are on, we're just, we're staving off the injury bug, which is good. It means that our players are playing, but we're obviously we're not winning. So that creates a little bit of a problem, but I'm okay with getting a better draft pick. I really am. We want Juwan James long term. Normally I say sign a player through the age of 30, but I'm actually going to increase him a little bit. I'm going to bring him down to 3.5 per year. Just kind of a flat number makes my OCD feel better. So we're going to go ahead and sign him to a six year deal. I'm okay with signing him through the age of 32 because this is a simulation rebuild and I'm not going to be as closely managing all of my players uh, long term as I would be if I were actually playing the franchise every game and, you know, pouring, you know, my heart and soul into it. But I'm okay signing him through the age of 32. He's going to progress by then and he'll be a good player. He's, he's signed on long term. We have him. He's going to be a Dolphin for life. AJ Derby, I don't mind keeping him on. Decent stats. I'll give him a, I'll give him a couple year deal. I'll give him a four year deal, actually. I'll sign him to two million per. I'll take his money down. See if he'll sign something like that. And he will. And we're going to move on. Scout real quick. We want to keep scouting quarterbacks. There are other positions that we want, but I want to make sure that we have at least a few rounds worth of quarterbacks scouted. You know, one of those early rounds is where we're going to convert a quarterback to. I like this, the 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 A throw power, and I like this as well. Anybody with A throw power, or A or A minus throw power, you know is going to be uh, 90 plus throw power, and that's what we want for our team. I just messed this up a little bit, it's kind of unfortunate. I like to spend all my points, but I'm going to end up with five left over. So we're going to move on from that. No big deal, it'll just hurt my OCD, like I said. We want to consider giving a couple extra players XP here. I'm okay still giving Mike Gesicki XP, Laramie Tunsil. Uh, instead of Minka this week, we're going to give Malik Hooker XP. And then we'll go ahead and do the same drills. We'll probably go ahead and give some other people XP here. We're gonna rotate them through because we want we want to try and get some players into the 80s by next season, uh, and we want to have a roster to be able to build around. We'll advance now. Yep, no more notifications. Advance the next week. We got two injuries this week. Still didn't win a game, which is okay. We have another contract to negotiate, so we'll go in and take a look at that. Frank Gore, I'm not going to bring him back. Um, you know, he's 35. I have no interest in bringing him back. I'm really considering trying to offer him a two-year contract, but I'm not too sure how it works in 19. If I offer him mo guaranteed money and he ends up retiring, I'm not sure if I lose that or not. So that's why I'm trying to stay away from that. I'd rather save the money for players than I know are going to be here. And where is Trace McSorley? I want to make sure I scout Trace McSorley here. I like Trace McSorley. I'm a Pennsylvania kid. What can I say? We're going to try and scout some offensive line as well. I can't scout anybody with 12. Does our coach have any XP at any position because if you have the trait at a certain position it only costs 11 instead of 15 yeah so we got half back I'll do that just so that we save some points uh, no signings go ahead give some more XP out do Malik Hooker here again um, instead of get sicky Hello Witherspoon instead of Tunsil. Everett. We want to get that secondary up because it's something we don't want to have to worry about long term. So 
So we're 0-4. It's looking like we're bottom of the league. It's looking like we're going to have a good pick, which I'm not going to complain about because these guys are all going to still be young next year. We're going to have a great core to build around. We're going to bring in some impact players, hopefully a quarterback, and it's going to be very game-changing for us. We're going to evaluate these two injuries real quick and see what's going on. Kenyon Drake's out for four weeks. That's okay. We brought in some depth. And then Bucky Hodge, our tight end, backup tight end, is out. Not a big deal uh, for any of those, to be honest with you. So we'll just go ahead and want to check some XP on these players. We want to keep trying to get these guys into the scheme. Kenny Stills is a big one. He's our long-term answer receiver because he's young. I want to keep pushing him into the scheme. I want to get him some XP eventually. Defense. Minka got another upgrade. Looking great. Already looking like Rashad Jones of Young. And we're going to take a look at some stats real quick as well. Alright, we got Weatherspoon into the scheme. It's going to take a little bit to get a Everett into the scheme. That's okay. I saw someone else. Yeah, Arden Key has an upgrade. Alright, and so being that we are 0-4, we're a quarter of the way through, let's see how our stats look. Tannehill's looking real bad. Five touchdowns, four interceptions, 800 yards. Actually not terrible but just not productive enough rushing Kenyon Drake is only averaging 2.9 yards per carry that's not good in the slightest that's actually very bad uh, receiving wise Chris Godwin leading the team I'll take that out of Chris Godwin he's he's young with good potential and these guys will be good uh, we might have to pull the trigger on bringing in a quarterback to be honest with you because this team could have some potential. I just don't know if it's worth it because you know you you risk sacrificing your you risk, risk sacrificing basically the first overall pick at this point if you try and bring in a quarterback. It might be worth going and trying to find a quarterback that I can start. It's a little bit better than Tannehill, maybe somebody or even that's not as good that's just younger. I really don't have any interest in anybody like this, though, so we'll roll with Tannehill from here. We'll advance to the next week, and we're just going to keep advancing. I think we're going to go to week eight here. We'll get uh, kind of a look at where we're at mid-season, and then we'll put a break in, and I'll come back at you guys next time uh, with the part four, I believe it will be, of this gameplay. Nobody else ready to negotiate. Um in terms of scouting, what other positions do we want? We're locked up at safety. We're kind of locked up at corner. It can't hurt to scout corners, and I'll actually scout Greedy because I know he'll be good. Um, I just like putting him on my board. Wouldn't mind having him top end like that. Uh, linebackers, scout first round linebackers in case there's somebody amazing that we want with the first pick if we end up getting it. I think it's going to be a quarterback. I just have to decide which one. And being that we're 0-5, I don't see much turning it around uh, at this point. You know, once you start 0-5, if I'm not personally playing the game, it's going to be tough for this team to turn it around. We're going to keep pumping into the secondary here. Uh, it might be worthwhile to pump some points into the offense soon. But I, I really like the fact that we have so many people in the scheme on defense that are getting XP, getting bonus XP. And I want to keep that up.
two more players ready to negotiate. I'm gonna go ahead and check for... Yep, so we got some XP. We'll get my Gasiki up. Lots of bonuses there, which is great. Probably pump some more XP into him soon. Keep Devontae Parker increasing. We're kind of at a point in our season where there's no turning back. I just messed that one up, clicking on the wrong one. But yeah, we're at a point in our season where there's no turning back. It's really just ride or die at this point, try and ride it out to a good pick. Clicked on the wrong one again. It does this thing where when you click on it, or when you scroll down, it kind of, uh... It, like, it doesn't... You can, you can hit the down button twice, but it's not actually going to go down twice. Willie Cooker got another upgrade. We'll get him above an 80. Hopefully. Yep, he's up to an 80. 78 in that scheme, so it's going to take a little bit more to get him up to where we want him to be. I think what we'll do when we hit halfway, we'll reevaluate our depth chart and everything. Reevaluate the team, decide what we want to do moving forward, so that'll be in the next video. Um, that'll be kind of interesting to see, so make sure you go back, you watch the other videos if you haven't by now, uh, see how we got to this point. Um, and then also leave comments, leave suggestions, what you think we should do moving forward. Uh, we can have a discussion about it, see how we want to take this team forward into the future. We're going to go, we're going to see who wants to negotiate here. Brock Osweiler, like I said, I'm not really interested in bringing him back. Uh, Steven Anthony is an interesting one. I don't mind the idea of bringing him back if we can bring him back for cheap as a depth linebacker. Uh, I think that we're going to wait on him, though. I think that's a good one to wait on until the end of the season to just kind of see where we're at and what we want to do with that. I'm going to scout some college players. We're going to keep doing O-linemen because I know that we need to pick up some O-linemen early in the first, second round, probably. Uh, and then we'll also probably want to look at ticket prices and everything, and I think I'll do that before I cut off this video. So we want to make sure that we... That we can still, you know, make some money by the end of the season, because I don't want to... I don't want to end up with no money to be able to bring in any free agents to help us out. Okay, we've given some XP to Godwin. I'm gonna keep giving it to Witherspoon and Everett. I'm gonna give it to. I'm gonna let Everett take it. I wanna give it some to the O line. So I wanna give some to Tunsil again. We gotta get him up. be done. I think we're good to go for this week. We're going to answer our media question. We'll look at our tickets. Um, so they're saying, it's fair to say wins and losses begin and end with your QB. Right now he's not playing well and your team's losing. What needs to change? It's really simple to me. So watch the games. If he just stops turning the ball over, we'll be in good shape. That's kind of a throw your quarterback under the bus type of answer. I see some indecision out there and so I begin to wonder about the game plans and the coaching. I'd like us to just look more prepared. Nothing needs to change yet, but if this keeps up long enough, I don't think we'll have to look at... I think we'll have to look at the QB situation. Um, I'm actually going to go with this one, and we're going to get less rating for it, but uh, I think what we're going to do, we're actually going to make a QB change at this point. I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to move up Osweiler. No, I really don't like that. We're just going to roll with what we got. We'll advance, we're 0-6, advance to the next week. I meant to look at my ticket prices and whatnot before that game, but we'll do it now. We'll do it first thing here. So 
So let me go owner. I'm gonna go to staff real quick. I'm gonna see if my coach has any XP. Upgrade packages. Only 500 XP, not gonna do anything with that. Uh, finance is where you wanna go for this. We're gonna go to tickets. We have good value to everything, but we're gonna lower them even more, try and bring in more people. We're gonna make them cheap, cheap. I have no problem with that. Yeah, cheap, cheap tickets. Merchandise is going to be all on sale. Jerseys, everybody's jerseys cheap nowadays. Let's make sure we get some some sales going even though we're not good. Because long term this team's going to be good. You guys are going to want jerseys. Uh, and then I meant to go to... Where are we at? We want to go here. We want to go to marketing, and we want to do not marketing. Sorry, that mistake. We want to do finances, and we want to do our concessions. I think we're gonna make everything three dollars here, two or three dollars. And then on this one, I like to do this, I like to make these consistent, so we have four bucks on everything on this page. And we don't have a three star, so we'll leave that there. Big injury decision, Kenyon Drake's cleared to play. Uh, we're going to start Ballage for now. I have no problem doing that. I want Kenyon Drake to be alive long term. I don't want to have to have issues long term with him continuing to get injured, his, you know, his injury rating degrading. <clears throat> and we actually got a win there. Uh, we got our first win against the Lowly Lions. <coughs> Excuse me, and I'm not even sure that their rating was bad. Uh, or sorry, their, their record was bad. I think that we just managed to finally get a win there, which... That's okay. I'm okay with that. I think the threat <laughs> of... Um, of Tannehill's job kind of gave him a kick in the ass there a little bit and got him to play a little bit better and we got a win. Um, so I'm okay with that. We're going to keep scouting. I want to keep scouting some corners. We need to, honestly, I need to stop scouting first round talent. I need to start scouting second round because we pretty much know we're taking a quarterback early. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of scout any position early in the second, third round that I can. Uh, Weekly training, we want to make sure we are on top of that still. I'm okay still giving Godwin XP. I want to, I will really want to pump it into Tunsil because if we don't keep doing that, that's a problem. And then we need to, we need to really get Mika Fitzpatrick up. And then I'm going to take it off of Averett for now and I'm going to put it back onto Malik Hooker. I want to make sure, I want to get Hooker into the into the scheme, and then after I get him into the scheme, we'll focus on the corners. Take a look here, so we're one in six. If we advance this, we'll be at the halfway point. I guess this is so uh, this is seven games done this is week eight currently so we are in the trade deadline uh you know we advance past this point it's said and done if i bring in a quarterback like bridgewater or somebody it's not going to make a difference at this point and we're too far in they're not going to be any better than Tannehill, so they're not going to play any better um they're not going to get a ton of xp so it's not going to make a huge difference i think we're just going to go ahead and roll with the plan that we have had established from the beginning and we're going to make it all happen in the offseason. We're going to get this team up to where it needs to be to be competitive. And this is great. So Kenyon Drake and Bucky Hodges both returning from an injury. Good to see that. Get our players back on the field. We have another media question, so we'll answer that. We're going to scout. We'll do our weekly training and everything. And then we're going to leave off here for the video for today. Since there's a lot of players ahead of the quarterbacks that are meant to be taken. So it leads me to believe it might be worth waiting on a quarterback, but you know, truthfully, I don't know. 
Drew Locke here looks like a pretty good uh, lock, if I want to be uh, a little bit funny about it. Uh, with good throw power, good accuracies, looks like he could be a pretty good um, secure pick there up at the top to be, you know, a good a good player to turn our franchise around. Okay, scouting the defensive line. Like I said, we want to bring in. I'm okay with that. That works there. Uh, we want to scout second round players now because I think we're. I think that's who we're taking if we get the first pick is Locke. And I will look at the standings real quick to show you guys where we stand. I, I imagine we can't be. We're actually tied with the Colts and the Bills. So between the three of us, one of us is going to end up with the first pick. Do our weekly training, and then I think we're going to leave it off there for this this episode. We'll, we'll, I'll do my upgrades, and then we'll leave it off. So we want it here, and we want to keep doing the same players there. Laramie Tunsil, I really want to turn out to be a strong tackle for us. I don't want to have to, you know, move somebody to that position. So, we'll go ahead and see who needs an upgrade. We'll scroll through each position. Not a whole lot of uh, progression at O-line. I thought we would be better at O-line because of the fact that we have a good running back and some good receivers, so they progress based off the, yard the total yardage for the offense not a big deal that they're not progressing we can bring in people in the offseason these guys are still young so they can still progress um, but I was really expecting Kenyon Drake to have a better year the fact that he was out for four weeks hurt us but uh, I thought he was a little bit better than what it seems to be in the simulation but hey you can't change it now we are where we are Malik Hooker is not getting any uh, points yet, but Fitzpatrick keeps going up, so you know he's going to be a great player by the end of the season. He's already at an 85, which is what the second best player on our team behind Wake. Shmarco Thomas with an XP point. I won't complain about that. Having a good backup safety never hurts. Uh, is it just me or does that look nothing like Shamarco Thomas? I didn't realize that until now. That looks absolutely nothing like Shamarco Thomas. And you know what? This is one of those things where you might even consider, because we're at 1 at 7 and we were trying to shoot for the first pick, you might consider holding off on all these points until the end of the season. Um, my general philosophy on this is to upgrade them as you get the, the points for them, because then they'll play better and get themselves more XP, and so it kind of like, it's like compound interest, it just kind of builds on itself. Um, but that could also potentially bring you some wins and cost you in terms of your overall position for that draft pick. So i answer the media question, and then I think we're done for today. You're under 500 right now, and you've watched this team struggle through the first half of the off, or sorry, of the season. Turning it around as soon as possible has to be the mindset now, doesn't it? We should be a playoff team, and I don't come to watch us lose. So yes, we have to turn things around. Yes, I mean really think that I really think that's all that needs to be said. This is a group that was assembled to win the Super Bowl, so it's time to wake up. Absolutely, I believe this team is better than the record, but if we're not, then there's going to be changes. Um, so really, this is a lose-lose situation. I don't think any of these answers that we pick is going are going to uh, give us a positive result, but I think this is probably the most pessimistic outlook. So we'll go with this one. Yeah, we're going to lose 7% per loss, so not looking good in terms of that, but that's what's going to happen if you, if you have a losing record like this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and click on this, and then, like I said, if you guys want to see... You know, any type of gameplay, Madden gameplay, MLB, FIFA, Detroit Become Human, Siege, you know, any game you can think of, I, I just about have it. So leave a comment down in the comment section, leave me feedback, let me know what you guys want to see, let me know what you guys think I should do for this team moving forward. 
Um, leave a like and subscribe. Stay here for more quality gaming content. Um, if you want to see me do more of those Let's Talk segments where I cover big issues, feel free to let me know. I, I think in the next episode we're going to have a special guest on to talk with us about some of the issues. So we'll see about that. Uh, I'm trying to come at you guys with consistent content every day, give you guys a, a break from your daily lives, uh, and just give you something enjoyable to watch uh, while you have some time. So if you guys like it, subscribe, leave comments, give me feedback, and leave a like on the video. Uh, and that's going to do it for this one. Thank you.